In this video, we're talking about the 17 things you must know when living in Austin, Texas. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around till the end because I'm gonna make sure that you don't embarrass yourself when you move to Austin. I'm Tiffany Moore. On this channel, I do videos every week about what it's like to live, work, play, and love your life in Austin, Texas. So if that is the information that you're looking for, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ding that little bell so you're notified every time I put out a new video. I have people reaching out to me every day who are moving to Austin, excited about it, wanna know what it's like to live here, and I absolutely love it. So if you are looking or thinking about moving to the Austin area, go ahead and shoot me a text, send me an email, give me a call, slide into my DMs, however you wanna get in touch with me, I've got your back when you're moving to Austin. So let's get right into it. 17 things you need to know when you live in Austin, Texas. One, Austin is hot and sunny. We have over 300 days of sun in Austin. Our summers get really hot. So this year we had over 60 days where it was 100 degrees or higher between July and September. Yeah, it was still 100 degrees in September. So FYI, you gotta have your sunglasses, you gotta have your hat, you gotta have your sunscreen. It is hot and sunny in Austin. Number two, Austin is a really dog friendly city. Everywhere you go that has outside seating, they're probably gonna have like a little bowl for water for your doggy. Some places even have doggy friendly snacks, but whether you're going to like a park, a restaurant, a grocery store, Academy Sports, you're gonna see dogs everywhere. So if you're bringing your doggy to Austin, good news, they're gonna be able to come everywhere with you. Austin is the live music capital of the world. So everywhere you go in Austin, there's live music. I'm talking about grocery stores, stores, cafes, parks, everywhere that you go, there's someone singing or playing or a band. It's really, really awesome. And during the summer, we had this cool series called Blues on the Green, where it is a free concert in Zilker Park, which is where we have Austin City Limits Festival every month during the summer. So you bring your blanket, you bring your camping chair, you bring a little cooler and you just chill and have fun and have the live music that we love in Austin. Number four, traffic is no joke in Austin. Like traffic is real. If you're coming from somewhere like Cedar Park or Round Rock or Georgetown and you're driving downtown for work, it's going to take you about 45 minutes to an hour to get there if you're driving rush hour, which is from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning or 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at night. So if that is your commute, just get ready, get a podcast ready, get your playlist ready, or just be prepared to zone out for an hour. Um, if you're living closer to the city, we do have some public transportation options. So we do have kind of a little light rail that'll take you into downtown. Um, we're talking about expanding it, but for right now, it's pretty limited. So if you are going anywhere downtown around those rush hour times, just be prepared for the traffic. But there is good news. Number five, Austin is a really bike friendly city. So we've done a lot of work to repainting the traffic lanes to make sure there's a designated bike lane in a lot of parts of town. We've got like over 35 miles of bike expressways just for people on bicycles to get across town. We've got tons of parks, tons of trails and everything. Uh, pretty much wherever you go in Austin, you can expect to see a bicyclist to your right. So you're gonna wanna look out for them and make sure that you don't hit them. Um, but if you're riding your bike around Austin, it's a really bike friendly city and everyone rides their bike around Austin. So let's talk about diversity in Austin number six. Austin has been improving as far as diversity, but we still have a ways to go. It actually ranks 73rd in the nation as far as diversity in cities, and it's sixth in Texas. So number one, Houston is the most diverse city in the nation, so that's obviously gonna be number one in Texas, but some other cities that are more diverse than Austin that might surprise you are Arlington, Plano, Fort Worth, and Dallas. Number seven, we're gonna talk about the food. Oh my God, the food in Austin is amazing. So even though we're working on increasing our diversity, we have got so much diversity when it comes to food, which is really, really cool. Anything that you like to eat, we do it really well in Austin. So I'm talking about everything from tacos, oysters, pizza, burgers, sushi, Thai food, Vietnamese food, everything that you like to eat, you can find a spot where it's done really, really well in Austin. Something that's been popping up recently in the past four or five years is ramen. There's a ton of ramen places in Austin and bagels have become the new thing in Austin. So there's a bunch of little bagel shops, kind of like traditional Jewish deli shops, um, really cool spot, but it's really cool to see the diversity and all the different kinds of food that there is to, is to eat in Austin and that it's so good. Like sure, there's some places that are not awesome, but for the most part, everywhere you go in Austin, the food is gonna be amazing and it's totally gonna be worth it. 
Number eight, we do not have any pro sports teams as of today. We do have a minor league baseball team. It's in Round Rock. It's called the Round Rock Express. Um, super fun to go to those baseball games. They do all kinds of stuff for 4th of July. They've got concerts there. They've got kids nights. It's really, really fun. It's a cool place to bring the family. Um, we are getting a major league soccer team. They're actually building a stadium right now. It's just outside of the domain, which is in North Austin. And it, the domain is this really cool, like eat, live, play, work kind of place. They've got apartments there. Um, they've got uh, big office buildings there, like Indeed is there, Verbo is there, um, I think Facebook has an office there, and tons of like restaurants and shops are kind of trying to bring a lot of stuff that's in downtown Austin up to North Austin, so you don't have to drive all the way down the traffic to get to all the cool restaurants and stuff. So that's what's in the domain, and the new soccer stadium is just outside of it, like you could literally walk there from the domain. So once that's built, it's going to be this huge area, there's going to be tons of parks and everything around it, so Austin's getting a pro sports team. It is going to be soccer, so that'll be new for the city, um, but we don't have pro football or pro basketball here. We do have college football. So number nine is we have University of Texas at Austin, which everyone who goes to UT will tell you there's only one true University of Texas. Um, I'm not from here, so I don't really get what all the fuss is about, but we have the UT Longhorns. And if you know anything about Texas, then you know football is huge in Texas. It's huge in Austin, it's huge for UT. If you go anywhere around downtown Austin on a game day, it's like the whole downtown area is doing this crazy tailgate. You can't go around one corner without people grilling up brats, having a beer like eight o'clock in the morning. It's so much fun and the stadium is huge. So like if you're looking for a traditional college football vibe and experience, you are gonna get it in Austin. It's, it's humongous, the school is big, the UT pride is huge, it's just so much fun. Number 10, you are probably gonna see more skin than you're used to in Austin. So in Austin, it's fine for men and women to go topless at any point of the day, at any time. So where you're most likely to see this are in parks, are in swimming holes, you're probably gonna see it on 6th Street and on Rainy Street at 11 o'clock at night. So just FYI, you're gonna see some skin. The only place where you can go fully nude in Austin though is Hippie Hollow. I'm gonna let you Google that for yourself and see what that's all about. Number 11, we've got bats. If you've heard that Austin has bats, that is like the understatement of the century. Austin has the largest urban bat population in the world. So the biggest bat colony in any city and in any country is in Austin. Every summer, one and a half million bats fly out from under the Congress Bridge downtown and eat anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 pounds of bugs. So yeah, Austin has bats. If you're standing over the Congress Bridge right before the sun goes down, get ready. They're all gonna come out and they're gonna start eating all the skeeters in the air, which is awesome. But just so you know, like everyone in Austin during the summer is trying to see the bats on the Congress Bridge. So you're gonna have to get there early. You're gonna be, have to be okay with like seeing it from afar. There is another bridge way north kind of in Round Rock where the bats kind of fly out of. It's just off of I-35, so there's nowhere where you can really like stand around and see it. The coolest spot to go is on the South Congress Bridge, um, but it is awesome and it's really cool to see them during the summer and just to know that they're out there eating all those bugs for you so you don't have to spray all the DEET and everything all over yourself. It's amazing. The bats in Austin are so cool. Number 12 is moon towers. So Austin has the only known remaining moon towers in the world. They were built in 1895 and they were pretty much like Austin's first street lamps. So there were a ton of them throughout the city. There's only a handful that remain today, but Austin, the city of Austin has set up ordinances preventing the demolition of any moon towers. There have been some recently that have been removed to make way for traffic patterns and road construction. Um, but they're not really allowed to demolish any moon towers. In fact, in the 90s, they spent over a million dollars basically breaking down and then rebuilding every screw and every guy wire in these moon towers to preserve them. There's a, a huge part of Austin history and something that we think is really cool. If you've ever seen Dazed and Confused Party at the Moon Tower, that's what they're talking about is these really cool moonlight towers in Austin. 
Okay, number 13 of things that you need to know when you live in Austin is the gentrification here. So this is happening in big cities all over the country. It's happening mostly in San Francisco, but also Denver, Boston, Portland, big places like that. And it's really just people who have been living in a neighborhood for a really long time or were like original residents of the neighborhood are being displaced because mortgages are higher, rents higher, taxes are higher. This is happening everywhere in Austin, but it's happening most prominently on the east side, on South Congress, and on the Red River Strip, which is where a lot of our music venues are at. So what used to be like really cool and eclectic independent shops and restaurants and cafes has turned into bright, shiny new apartments and yoga studios and lash studios and places where you can get like a $12 mimosa. And it's kind of taking the charm and the culture away from this area of town and making it just more suburban. Number 14, things you must know when living in Austin, breakfast tacos. Like if you haven't had breakfast tacos, as soon as you get off the plane, go and get one. They are perfect for if you have an early morning meeting and you wanna be the superstar of the meeting, go and pick up a dozen breakfast tacos. If you had a really late night and you need something to help you get up and running, go get a breakfast taco and just move on with your day. Uh, most of the time they are egg and some kind of protein or veggie. Um, the best place to get one, in my opinion, one of my favorite breakfast tacos is Rudy's Barbecue, which sounds crazy. Um, Rudy's is like a, a smaller barbecue chain, but they're all throughout the Southwest. So Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, um, a couple in Colorado. Um, they make pretty decent barbecue and I love their breakfast tacos. Now, since this is Austin, Texas, you are gonna get breakfast tacos with brisket in it, which is amazing. Like the egg and brisket tacos are so good. A couple other of my favorite are bean and cheese, or egg and potato, or you can never go wrong with just egg and bacon breakfast taco. You haven't really been to Austin if you haven't had a breakfast taco. So like I said, as soon as you get here, go ahead and get one, you'll see what I'm talking about. Number 15 is day trips from Austin. So a lot of people don't know how big Texas is. It's pretty big, it's literally 12 hours to drive from the easternmost point to the westernmost point in Texas, and 12 hours to drive from the northernmost point to the southernmost point. So Texas is really humongous, and Austin is deep in the heart of Texas. So if you want to go somewhere out of Austin without flying, you're gonna have to drive a little ways to get there. So I'm gonna talk about a few day trips that you can go uh, from Austin to these places and just kind of escape the city and be somewhere totally different. One of the coolest places to go is Fredericksburg. So Fredericksburg is just about two hours outside of the city. It is known for farms, orchards, and wineries. So anytime people are taking a trip to Fredericksburg, there's usually some wine involved. There's just like a ton of wineries all along the main road in Fredericksburg. And it's so much fun to just go and do like a wine tour or to pick one of your favorites and go and hang out there for a few hours. Fredericksburg is a quiet little town. They have a little downtown area with a bunch of streets with houses and stuff on it. Other than that, there's not really much there except for the farmland and the industries that come out of that. So it's a really fun place to go if you want to spend like a day. Uh, for my husband's birthday a couple years ago, we actually went out to Fredericksburg and picked our own peaches. And then we went and had some wine from the winery that we belong to and turned around and drove back to Austin. And it was an amazing day. So um, yeah, definitely check out Fredericksburg if you want to go somewhere and just chill for a while, be out in the country and not have to be in kind of the hustle and bustle of the city. Another really cool day trip from Austin is Wimberley. So Wimberley is only about an hour outside of Austin, but the drive out there is pretty much the trip. Like that's why you're going out there. The drive is so gorgeous. You're, you're in these rolling hills in Texas Hill Country. It's green everywhere. You come up at the top of this hill and you just get to see like the horizon and all the land in front of you. It is gorgeous. So I drove out there a few times while they were buying their house. And every time I went there, I was just like, man, it's gorgeous out here. It's so pretty and it's so peaceful. Um, also though, once you get to Wimberley, they have a ton of wineries, they have a ton of distilleries and breweries. And a lot of them are set out in these like country locations. So you can get a really good getaway from Austin, only driving an hour away and just be somewhere that's quiet and where you can look at the landscape and just sit in hill country and be amongst the trees and the nature and the rocks and everything. Just enjoy life that's a little bit quieter for a little bit before you go back to Austin and go back to the city and everything. 
Another fun day trip from Austin is San Antonio. So San Antonio is only about an hour and a half south of Austin. There's so much cool Texas history in San Antonio. That is one of the coolest things about it. So when you go down there, you've got to check out the Alamo, but learn about the Alamo before you go. It's a really cool story and a really cool part of Texas history. And go check out the missions that are down there and just kind of walk around and take your time, take in some of the history. It's really, really neat. Um, and then just take a little bit of a drive and go down to the river walk. Like the Alamo is literally in the middle of downtown. You can just walk a block and go down to the river walk and look at all the uh, restaurants and everything that are down there. You could do a little pub tour, just walk on the river walk, have a drink here, have a bite there. It's just a fun place to go and chill. And then outside of downtown, um, they've got a lot of the same stuff that Austin does. They've got really good food, awesome pizza, really good barbecue. They've got awesome breweries down there. Um, it's just a fun place to hang out and get away from Austin. If looking uh, at going out in the country and driving out with the hills and the trees, if that is not your jam, if you just wanna go out to like a city that's different from Austin, totally go down and check out San Antonio. They've got a lot of cool stuff to do there, good things to eat and drink. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then you just drive an hour and a half back up north and then you're home in Austin. Another thing you must know is that people in Austin love to be outside. Almost everything that we do is outside, whether it is 104 degrees outside or 30 degrees outside. Uh, it's really pretty here, so we just really like being out there. We've got a ton of food trucks and food trailers, so if you're, if you're eating at any of those, you're gonna be eating outside, whether you plop down at a picnic table that they have there, or you're just eating on the run and walking around looking at all the cool stuff that we have. So we've got a ton of parks, we've got a ton of swimming holes, ton of places to go and hike. We've got bike trails, running trails, um, and even the restaurants and everything. Most cool restaurants in Austin are gonna have some kind of patio or outdoor seating because it's just really pretty out here and it feels really good and you've got this breeze going. Um, it's just perfect. And they do make a lot of um, adjustments for the weather. So if you're sitting outside, a lot of places will have fans, they'll have misters so that you can just be a little bit cooler while you're enjoying being outside. And then on the other side, during the winter, they've got a lot of gas heaters and stuff so you can still see the trees, see the hills, see all the critters and everything, uh, but not be freezing or be burning hot. So being outside is definitely something that we love to do. If you like being outside, then you're gonna love being in Austin. Okay, but here's the downfall. So number 18 about things you must know when you live in Austin is we have some crazy allergies. So how bad are the allergies in Austin? My husband had no allergy issues before he moved here. And like the week we moved here, he started breaking out in hives. His eyes were all itchy. His sinuses were all jacked up. So like the allergy issue is real here. Everyone usually has allergies at some point in the year. For me, September is just allergy month. My eyes are itchy and watery feel sick, everything is just jacked up, um, allergies are nasty in Austin. Then we have cedar fever, which comes like in December, January. One of my friends gets hit with really bad cedar fever every year. So you just have to figure out what your body is more susceptible to and manage it from there. Some people take allergy meds, some people do essential oils. I like to neti pot, but you're gonna have to come up with like your allergy strategy and just plan on it every year. Um, but part of the reason that we have such crazy allergies is there's so much life here. Like there's so many plants and everything blooming and everything is just like growing all at the same time. And that is going to throw a lot of junk into the air that our bodies just aren't used to. So even if you've never had allergies before, plan on getting them in Austin and figure out if you're gonna go to the doctor, you're just gonna self-manage. If you're gonna do homeopathic, you're gonna need to do something. So just count on getting some kind of allergies when you get here. Okay, now I have a little bonus for you. This is actually bonus number 18, and it's how to not embarrass yourself when you move to Austin um, and let everyone know that you are an outsider and you don't belong here. So there's a lot of things in Austin that are spelled one way and they are said another, and you probably have been saying them one way your entire life, but when you move to Austin, you're gonna have to learn how to say them the Austin way. So we're gonna go through a handful right now. So burn it. You've probably seen this word or this name before and you say Burnett and everyone in the world says Burnett, but in Austin you say burn it. We have a little phrase to help newcomers and it goes, it's burn it, darn it, learn it. So um, yeah, you'll never forget that. Um, so anyway, when you see this, it's burn it and not Burnett. All right, next is what most people say is Guadalupe. In Austin, you say Guadalupe. So this word right here if you are sounding it out, it looks like Peter Nallis. If you're from Maryland, like me, um, you can tell I'm probably not even from Texas. I say Peter Nallis. I also say pecans. 
So um, don't say it like that. If you say it like that in Austin, everyone's gonna know that you're an outsider. So the way that you say this word is perdinalis. All right, here we go, another one. This looks like manor. So-and-so lives on a manor. We're going down manor street. Wrong, don't say manor in Austin. When you're talking about this word, you say manor. All right, now we've got this one. Normally people would say Mueller, um, kind of like Ferris Bueller, but it's not. In Austin, you say Miller. Okay, this one might not be too much of a surprise if you are familiar with the German language at all. So it looks like Koenig, but the O and the E actually make an A sound. And so this is pronounced Koenig. Last one, this is the one that even Austinites don't understand why we say it like this. This looks like, it's a really fun word to say, manchaka, it looks awesome. But in Austin, no, it's manchak. So if you're moving to Austin, these are the things that you need to know when you live here so that you don't let everyone know that you just moved here like yesterday. There are a ton of really cool neighborhoods and cities and pockets around Austin. And I'm gonna help you find the right one for you that jives with your passions and the things that you love to do and how you live your life. But the only way that I can do it is you've gotta reach out to me. So give me a call, send me an email, shoot me a text, slide into my DMs, however you wanna get in touch with me, I've got your back when you're moving to Austin. So you're gonna start seeing a bunch of videos pop up here. Go ahead and start clicking on those so you can learn more about the neighborhoods that we have, how much it costs to live here, and what it's really like to live in Austin. What are the pros and cons? And I will see you later.